Hi, welcome to a new Groovitude video. This time we're going to look at some creative hand independence and rhythmic coordination exercises based on the rhythmic displacement of polyrhythms. 4 over 3 is a common polyrhythmic ratio that we can often find in many different styles of music. If we take a closer look at this rhythmic structure and think of it as 4 groups of 3 subdivisions stacked against 3 groups of 4 subdivisions, we can reinterpret our notation and think of it as dotted eighth notes over quarter notes extending across a space of 12 subdivisions. Looking at the sum of all the attack points from both layers of this polyrhythm, we can notice a relatively simple composite rhythmic pattern. With this in mind, we can comfortably dare to play it in the piano in many different ways, such as splitting each part into each hand or also playing both parts with the right hand or the left hand or playing both parts on both hands simultaneously. With this last case, we can visualize a polyphonic four-part musical texture and use this concept to explore some creative possibilities. If we have two separate sets of 4 over 3 polyrhythms played by each hand and aligned to a shared subdivision grid, we can define the main pulse as the quarter note and apply some rhythmic displacement to one of the hands by shifting the polyrhythm to different starting points in the subdivision, while the other hand stays in place, locked in to the main pulse. By doing this, we can emphasize the independence of the voices, having each one not only existing on its own pitch register, but also its own temporal space. An interesting feature of the musical texture created by these displaced polyrhythms stands out when we start to repeat the pattern. As we loop this shape, we can detect different ways in which inner and outer voices align with each other to form other polyrhythmic relationships with trees and fours that begin and end at different points in the subdivision. Seeing all of these four layers neatly aligned to the subdivision grid reveals a dense web of interconnected temporal relationships that will spark our ear's interest as we subconsciously pick up these qualities. This will musically stimulate our ears in a way that is comparable to looking at a kaleidoscope or some kind of geometric optical art. Let's try an example of this displacement over a simple four note voicing with F on the bass, D on the tenor, E on the alto and A on the soprano. Paying attention to the rhythmic identity of each register as we highlight each layer. Now that we have an idea of what these polyrhythmic textures sound like, Let's try making the same example a little bit more musical, spicing it up with some voice leading and shifting harmonies in the key of A minor. Using this concept of displaced polyrhythms, we can uncover many possibilities that will challenge us, but also help us to improve our hand independence and rhythmic coordination. We can explore all of the possible displaced positions in the right hand, while the left hand stays locked into the pulse, or also do the opposite by displacing only the left hand. Another way to practice and explore interesting musical possibilities is to flip the registers of the layers with trees and fours in the polyrhythm played by one of the hands, moving the dotted eighths to the bottom and the quarter notes to the top. Considering these possible alterations, we can find three new combinations by flipping only the layers on the right hand, or only on the left hand, or flipping both hands. By looking into the possible displacements of these flipped variations, we can find new interesting ways in which the voices interact rhythmically while also getting through a good rhythmic coordination challenge. Let's have a look at the four possible combinations, 
but only using the same displacement that we played before, where the right hand is shifted by two sixteenth notes. First, let's practice playing through all of these, only using one chord and focusing on the changing rhythmic layers. Now that we have a better understanding of this concept of flipping layers, worked a little bit to juggle all of these notes and reinforce the muscle memory involved, let's get back to the same example that we played before, with the A minor chord progression. Only this time, we will flip the polyrhythms layers on the right hand only, with quarter notes above and dotted eighths below. The harmony and voice leading remains exactly the same. Let's check it out. Okay, now let's get to the next version of the example, where only the polyrhythm of the left hand is flipped, with quarter notes above and dotted eighths below. The right hand stays as it was during the first example. Now for the final example, let's go through the last version, with layers on both hands, flipped to quarter notes on top and dotted eights on the bottom. Let's play it. With this last example, we have completed all of the four possible layer combinations and worked on our rhythmic coordination in a creative and musical way. Other possible displacements remain to be explored through this concept, allowing us to potentially discover other interesting musical possibilities. Follow the link in the description to download the musical examples in PDF format. In this file, you will find all of the four examples fully notated as displaced polyrhythms and also accompanied by an alternate notation cheat sheet where all the notes are combined into one layer, visually making the rhythmic alignment of the hands more evident. I hope you have found this musical concept interesting and useful. Thank you for watching this Groovitude video. If you enjoy the content of this channel, please consider supporting on Patreon. Visit groovitude.com for more scores and info on private lessons. Don't forget to like, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel.